Today, I'm here in Battle Creek, Michigan in the Oak Hill Cemetery about to go on a really cool guided tour of the Seventh-day Adventist history and pioneers who are buried here. That's coming up next. Good afternoon, everyone. We are going to um, uh, go over to the Oak Hill Cemetery and walk through the cemetery. So you'll need to be able to walk. Actually, let's pray together. Father, uh, it's not just information, it's experience that we need with you. But we do want to bring those two together. And I pray that your Holy Spirit will be with us. Um, this, this village is where the residential area was. They sometimes called this Advent Town <coughs> because there were so many Adventists that lived over on this side of town. <coughs> um, there are various homes. And when you come back, if you haven't been on the village tour yet, you'll go into some of these homes, which are in their original place. Now, there's some home buildings that have been brought here but there are homes that are still in their original place. James and Ellen White's home and Deacon John White and some of these others. <clears throat> so there were a lot of Adventists that lived out here. But we're kind of outside outside of downtown or the town part of town where the, the Adventists were. Now, <clears throat> we're going to turn right and go up and go around the way we, a way we don't usually go, but that's really kind of convenient for us. Because there's a large vacant area up here just up from the White's home, which is the location, the original location of the fairgrounds for Battle Creek. It's also where John Harvey Kellogg built his house, okay? So it was later John Harvey Kellogg's house. <clears throat> the Whites were here, the fairground was here, and so during the Civil War, the boys could hear the soldiers drilling and preparing for war. And they had war lust. <laughs> and so um, Henry and Edson, Edson was a little younger than Henry, they would come up the street here and they would march with them. They even developed their own drum. They made their own drum and their own fife. And at one point, to their great joy, the officer let them beat the march at least one length across the field. This greatly concerned James and Ellen White, <clears throat> and they ended up taking a trip. This was in 1863. They ended up taking a trip up to Maine to get their boys away from the fairgrounds. They lived right by it here. And unfortunately, that's when Henry contracted pneumonia and ended up dying. We'll see where he's buried there in Oak Hill Cemetery. <clears throat> but this was also the site back there of um, John Harvey Kellogg's home. He had a very large home there. So this was the more residential side and where the fairgrounds were. So we're going to come into town, towards town a little bit here. This is the site of Battle Creek College. Okay? We're going to turn right onto this street here. And <clears throat> Battle Creek College uh, was established in 1874. This used to, by the way, be an Adventist hospital and it is no longer the case. It closed some years ago. Um, Uriah Smith lived just across from the school here as well. This whole place where the armory is, the um, presently, is where Battle Creek College was. <clears throat> so your alma mater began right here. It was going to be, or at least Ellen White hoped, maybe we can just pause for a moment here, Steve. Um, Ellen White hoped and that they would start the school out of town. This was a bit too close to town. And her thought maybe was the fairgrounds, which we just came down from. It's not that far away, right? But this was out not right in town. But the problem was, look what's right across the street over there. What is that? That's a sanitarium. That is what used to be the sanitarium. So property was available across the street from the sanitarium to build the school. And that was just too convenient. So they put convenience ahead of what's best for the students spiritually. So they ended up boarding the students in homes around. And unfortunately, there was too close of a connection to town and so forth. And it created spiritual issues and troubles for some of the students. Uh, but this is where Battle Creek College was. 
and uh, the sanitarium you can see is just across the street. Now the sanitarium you're looking at is not the original first, there was actually a progression of buildings. First there was the Health Reform Institute, which was a house that had belonged to a judge that they converted and then expanded to initially start health work in 1866. When John Harvey Kellogg became the director of the sanitarium, uh, by the way, do you know why they called it a sanitarium instead of a hospital? Well, in the 19th century, hospitals is where you went to die. Hospitals had nurses, but initially nurses were prostitutes who were sentenced to serve. Oh, wow. And other people. It was only a little bit later that professional nursing became, began to have more um, dominance. <clears throat> and so, it, and rats were running around. It was a terrible thing. <clears throat> so when people said, oh, she's in the hospital, everyone gets quiet. Oh, we're sorry. <laughs> On the other hand, a sanitarium is where people went and they pampered you, you know. They fed you good food and they gave you massages and all of this stuff and you stayed for weeks, you know. And the rich did this and so a sanitarium, well, everyone wants to go to a sanitarium. So there's no way it's gonna be called a hospital, all right? So we, we think today after the tuberculosis stuff and everything, we think sanitariums or, or mental hospitals, we, we, we have a totally flipped <laughs> mental picture to the 19th century, okay? So the, the sanitarium that John Harvey Kellogg built was a wood building. And that wood building was um, growing, 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 growing. And then they built an annex, an additional building, and then they had the, some other buildings. And pretty soon it's this huge complex, all of wood. Now why did they make it of wood? <coughs> it was cheaper. And they weren't gonna need more than that because Jesus was coming soon. Most of our early buildings were of wood because of that. Now that burned in 1902 and Kellogg immediately planned to rebuild. Kellogg was an empire builder. His first problem was not pantheism. It was um, gathering power and control and influence. And so he immediately planned to rebuild this building, which is not wood, right? And Ellen White was counseling, build it smaller, decentralize. Because we had the college, a large sanitarium. We had the publishing house. I'm gonna show you where that was, just down the street. We had the general conference offices. All of these major institutions in one little town at a time when the membership of the church was no larger than some smaller unions, okay? And some conferences even. And so <clears throat> they were supporting all of this. And when she went in mission for mission overseas to Australia, the support wasn't there because they had all of this to take care of. And so God caused a convergence of circumstances that with the fires in particular that decentralized the work from Battle Creek. But for many years, during the last part of the 19th century, this was Adventist Center, okay? So he rebuilt the sanitarium and he put three wings out the back. And those wings he didn't tell Ellen White about and some of the other church leaders until after the foundation was already poured because he was afraid they'd say no. So he was in every way trying to enlarge the sanitarium. So this eventually was transitioned from being Battle Creek College because Battle Creek College moved where? To Berrien Springs. To Berrien Springs, Michigan and became Emmanuel Missionary College. And so this became AMMC, American Medical Missionary College. And it became a part then of the sanitarium uh, under the direction of John Harvey Kellogg. And that continued for a while yet. So it gives you some idea of the proximity of the case that you have. Just stop at the light. If you look up here on the corner, you see this um, brick building or stone brick building. Um, it's a fire station. That was built in 1903 because of the Adventist fires. The sanitarium burned, then the Review and Herald built, burned. 
So you had a, a one-two punch. But made two of the major institutions burned to the ground and were lost. So they built a fire department because they couldn't handle these big Adventist fires. <laughs> and of course, God used that to then the, the church moved to Washington, D.C., Tacoma Park, 1903. It's, this is Battle Creek, by the way. And so um, people say, well, what was the big battle? It wasn't a big battle. It was a disagreement, a little struggle between some Native Americans and sur some surveyors who were doing surveying. So it wasn't very much of a thing, but it came to be known as Battle Creek. So there's not some big battle that this town is named after. A lot of people uh, say, what was the big battle? It wasn't a big battle. <coughs> so, okay, so we're, we're coming, we're leaving kind of the, the area where Avenus institutions were, and we're now going out to the cemetery. The other thing that we won't go by right now, but there were a couple of railroad stations. And the railroad stations are important places because that's where Avenus came and went. And where missionaries would go. Often when a missionary would be sent overseas, the whole community would come out to see them off. They would pray for them, they would sing. These stations became centers of, of spiritual energy. And also witness to the community as well. <clears throat> this is one of the, I think this is Ralston, isn't it? Um, there are, were many cereal factories that grew up in Battle Creek. <clears throat> Who is it that invented or developed the cereal industry here in Battle Creek? You say Kellogg. Kellogg's brother. Which Kellogg? Okay, let's, let me help you get to know these two guys, the right names. Um, John Harvey Kellogg is the medical man, okay? W.K. Kellogg, Will Keith Kellogg, is the businessman, okay? And it's the medical man who developed the, the health foods, the cereals and so forth. W.K. took them and made money on them. John Harvey was more interested in reform. W.K. was more interested in wealth. And that led to trouble between the two of them because uh, first, W.K. worked for John Harvey and there was always a tension. Is it more money or more health? And they found out when they added a little bit of sugar, what happened to sales? They went up. And so Kellogg was, John Harvey was holding the line, not too much sugar. But he took a trip one time to uh, Europe. He liked to travel. He was always hobnobbing with whoever. <clears throat> he liked to have pictures taken with anyone who was famous. He wore a white suit, by the way. You'll see his white suit in the visitor center, but one of them there. He was a short man, uh, but he certainly liked to be noticed. He argued, though, that the white suit was all about health because it helped the sun's rays, you know, <laughs> affect his body more. At least I heard him, uh, I read somewhere that was reported in the newspaper. Now, maybe the reporter was just, but I don't think so. I think he somehow passed that thought along. So he, he was drawing attention to himself quite a bit, even though he was a short man. Maybe he had short man syndrome. You know? At one point, he told people he had measured his body and his torso, he determined, was the same same height or, or length as a six-foot man. And so he would tell people, it's just legs. It's just legs. You know, he had the stature. It was just his legs were a little short. <clears throat> but John Harvey uh, went to Europe, and uh, WK added some more sugar, and sales went up. And, of course, the sugar stayed in. So they ended up splitting ways. And... For a while, I mean, John Harvey had developed it, but then W.K. advertised, which this Will Keith advertised, he put a lot of money into advertisement. And then he sued his brother, John Harvey, for the name, because he had invested so much in it. And that produced an estrangement between these two men. So W.K. Kellogg was not a Seventh-day Adventist. That's something we need to understand. John Harvey was. In 1907, he was disfellowshipped from the church, but or removed from membership because of a number of things, including 
his pantheistic views and his intrigues, really it was his intrigues to try to control things. He even at one point was trying to control the, the church, the Dime Tabernacle, take control of the Dime Tabernacle. So, uh, but W.K., um, during his years of wealth, was not a Seventh-day Adventist, but he always kept an Adventist nurse. He would have no other nurse but a Seventh-day Adventist nurse. Um, so anyway, we'll go. We'll see both of their graves as we're walking around.